All right, welcome everybody. Thank you um, again for the uh, for the invite. Great organization and for a great day one. Um, so I'll start off uh, speaking about DHS two for LMIS last mile solution supporting supply chain and health program management. All right, so there's a lot in this title, but I'll try to get through all of the different aspects and what that means for using DHS2 in this use case. Um, and my name is Breno Horst, uh, working with the University of Oslo HISP Center as the LMIS Tech Lead, and I'll give you an introduction on that as well. So for this session, I'll have a short introduction. I'll go through the DHS2 LMIS approach about nine slides there, but really important to get a background of what we can achieve and what we recommend as best practice. I'll go through the overview of the specific features. There are quite a few slides, but many screenshots there, and that will really just be a snapshot of what can be done. And in the afternoon, there will be a session where we can do more hands-on and I can answer specific questions. And um, I think session three will be a, a good starting point for that. One single slide on guidance and resources, just uh, with some quick links, which you can then also go into the presentation and follow up on those. And then a short summary as well, only three slides there, but giving a, a closure to the discussion and why we present this as our approach. So for the introduction, um, I'll share a global team perspective. So the perspective from the HISP Center, seeing how DHIS2 has been used for collecting stock cold chain, and other LMIS-related data. And this will be our perspective across the field, both within DHS2, but also touching on a few other uh, tools. And then it's to receive feedback and launch this discussion with all of you, because your feedback is really important. It's not that I'm presenting this as the only way, but it's what we see as best practice. But your feedback, your perspectives are essential to making a useful and um, uh, relevant use case for, uh, for your work. So as part of the introduction as well, um, myself, Brenna Horst, LMS Tech Lead. I work closely with a technical advisor, George McGuire, who has many years uh, and uh, lots of research experience working within health uh, supply chain. Uh, we're also having support from uh, Per Kronstler, who's a supply chain advisor. And then we have two dedicated uh, members in different HISP groups who are then working with implementing the use case and developing this further. This is in addition to all of the different uh, uh, members within the HISP Center working on developing um, the, the use case. So now for the approach, and this is again, uh, what we see as a reason for using DHIS2 within this use case. And we oftentimes get pushback from other vendors, from other uh, developers developing other tools. Why is DHIS2 going into this field? And here, just to give a, a snapshot, and this is a, an overview from a World Bank uh, Health Information Systems uh, uh, paper where uh, LMIS is shown as a part of the HIS landscape. We're not looking to do logistics for the sake of logistics, but really to contribute to health outcomes and looking at how it fits into this overall uh, picture. So this is really the focus. It's not uh, uh, anything more than contributing to a foundational aspect of health service delivery. And then DHIS2, of course, you've seen this before, um, where it's been implemented globally uh, and increasing. Um, this is also another very strong aspect. Um, and I'll relate this back to the other tools, the ELMIS tools that have been implemented. None of them have the same reach and the same uh, success as DHIS2 has had within HIS and HMIS. And this, then means that there's a lot of competence, a lot of infrastructure, resources, capacity with using this system. And that can be leveraged for capturing stock data in a specific way, which I'll explain further. But it's leveraging all of this capacity, all of the knowledge that all of you have and you have within your countries to then bring in data that's not being captured in any other way. Also on the approach, we looked at the practice and again, uh, how DHS2 was being used, but then we also wanted to have some standards and looking at what do the uh, uh, standards say about uh, health supply chain management and stock management, also cold chain. Um, and these are two key documents which we've used. And I think the, the most important one that I would refer to is the target software standard for vaccine supply chain information systems. Um, and that was recently revised, the second version released early this year by the interagency supply chain group, which is made up of all of the major donors supporting uh, our work. 
and some of the key aspects end-to-end -end visibility within the national supply chains so from a central medical store down to a facility having real-time data so how much do we have of which product in which location uh, right now capturing both transactions and being able to provide reports either monthly quarterly or so on reports interoperability with uh, the health information system which in a sense is a, a an easy one for dhis2 being that the health data is, is there in the same system and then some cold chain monitoring and cold chain uh, features so those are the key aspects and they go into much more detail in the document of course and then as part of our resources, and there's a link within the presentation as well at the bottom right, which you can click with a comparison of the specific features, specific requirements, and then a explanation of what DHS2 can or cannot provide and an explanation why. And you can even comment on the document and ask us questions. Why can we not do this or that? Why can we not use DHS2 at a central medical store? Um, and we can give explanations and elaborate on that. But this is a very key reference document when discussing requirements and functional requirements for what you're aiming to achieve by using DHIS2 for stock management. Now to give you a snapshot on this uh, functional requirement perspective in the national supply chain. So if you take this first uh, um, uh, part here as the central ELMIS or ERP, so a central system managing supply chain, and then you have your last small tools. This is the functional uh, features within uh, a facility level. You have a very um, extensive, and this is really a small list of different uh, requirements that this tool would need to provide at a central medical store, state level down to district. Uh, everything from procurement to uh, warehouse management and really large scale warehouses when you're talking about a central medical store, transport, tracking, and many other features not the least of which demand planning and forecasting, which ensures that you have the supplies you need throughout the chain. What we focus on and what I'll elaborate in detail are the features then uh, for stock management, two different options there for cold chain management, the analytics and a simple product catalog, which we've now developed and we have available to be used within DHIS2. Many of you are already capturing stock management in, in one way or another. so. It's partly already there, but those are then the features that we would recommend to use for DHS2, um, LMIS, and which I will elaborate on. Um, I'll have another slide on considerations before, uh, but it's important to keep in mind what the scope is of implementation, what the features that you're targeting, and the reason for that. Um, and I think scope creep is a very um, real risk when discussing this that small uh, detailed uh, box suddenly increases when you start implementing and then it starts taking space up here. And I think that's something we need to guard against and understand exactly why we're doing what we're doing. Now to give a, a quick overview of the data integration model or the data being used as a very uh, generic representation of a, of a health structure within the country. If you have your health information pillar on the right with DHS2 being used at, at multiple levels for capturing and analyzing data, for the logistics data uh, or logistics information here on the left, we're only looking at the community health worker, hospital, health center, really the service level of uh, the supply chain. We're not looking to implement at a central medical store or even down to a district store. Those really we recommend using a dedicated uh, supply chain management tool like an ELMIS or an ERP. And we have multiple examples of this being done, but having this integration uh, through an interoperability layer or point-to-point -point integration between the systems, and that way covering an end-to-end -end supply chain uh, requirement that we aim to achieve and also the standards asked to be, uh, to be met. Now people ask, why not just use a tool uh, dedicated for supply chain management in all of the facilities? And uh, this is just a very, very small uh, number of tools. There are really hundreds to thousands of different tools being implemented if we look at a global the global landscape, uh, oftentimes in parallel for specific programs. And um, none have really attained the same reach that DHS2 has, as I already mentioned. And what we're looking to do is then supplement uh, their uh, capacity at a central level to reach the facility level. Um, they all have their strengths and weaknesses for, for different reasons. Some of them, if you go to the right side with Oracle and Sage, you have very expensive, very resource demanding uh, tools that require completely restructuring an organization processes to fit their model. 
to then very flexible tools, but maybe with slightly less features than you would have with the full-scale ERP. One of the vendors here that we're working closely with and which maybe uh, some of you are familiar with is M-Supply. They're based in New Zealand and they have quite a few implementations in, in Asia. And um, they are a already 20 years in the field, so they have quite a bit of experience. Um, they're migrating to an open source uh, uh, solution, so they'll be making their code available and their existing implementations should be migrated to a, an open source as well. And we've been developing a closer collaboration with them um, and we'll even be providing some guidance, publishing some guidance and next week holding a webinar. So I just take the time to uh, promote then <laughs> this webinar, which will share the invitation to all of you so you can see how a functional integration can actually be made uh, um, with the M supply tool to be able to provide this end to end supply chain management. Right, so that's the, the overview of the different tools. And then as I've hinted upon a few times already in the presentation, DHIS2 can support uh, um, multiple different solutions within this facility level um, um, uh, stock management and, uh, and cold chain management. But there are certain considerations to take. And I think this is important. I'll, I'll touch on these, but we really need to elaborate them on a case by case basis because uh, supply chain management policies will vary from country to country. Um, the way that these structures are set up to, to distribute uh, 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 medicines and products throughout the country will not be exactly the same, and that needs to be accounted for. Um, what we then can say as a starting point is that we can support multiple uh, uh, structures and policies, but we promote holistic supply chain management. So having all of the products within one system and not having this siloed uh, parallel management with maybe one tool for one program and maybe paper-based in Excel for another and DHIS2 for, for yet a third. Um, and this is something that we clearly see happening. So we really promote and aim to answer to this holistic management. Another one is order management and uh, we would uh, promote strongly VMI, vendor managed inventory, something you can discuss with your supply chain teams. Um, not used everywhere, but this puts the ordering, demand planning in the hands of a central store uh, or a district store rather than having individual facilities making individual orders with varying levels of competence. So it's really about putting that uh, uh, requirement and technical competence within the hands of a store that should have better capacity than the individual facilities. Residual stock count for uh, counting stocks at a facility store uh, or, or at a medical store, and I'll go into that slightly later. And then the importance of having facility level consumption data, how much is actually being used and not speculating on the number of items that were sent in a previous order, a previous month or the previous six months. Uh, it's knowing what the actual quantities that have been used are. And I'll refer also back to that much later because you create this demand distortion based on a system dynamics theory that uh, um, then gives a, a small signal down in the supply chain will give a very large distortion further up. Last point on the considerations, and I'm really bringing this up because it's important to, to not jump into a solution before really understanding what is behind if we simply look at stock replenishment. So how do you calculate orders for your facility if that's being done through VMI or orders coming from a facility level? You have all of these components to build your uh, stock order. How much stock do you have on hand? What is your average demand? And you can take previous month, previous six months or previous 12 months. What's the lead time? How long does it take for the, for the goods to actually arrive? What are your safety and buffer stocks? Uh, and you can work in all kinds of different uh, uh, variables in there based on seasonality and how these uh, uh, variations occur. And the key aspect is to understand what is happening behind each one of these points. If you happen to have a wrong lead time, there's no system that can overcome that. The system will only ensure that you have a guaranteed stock out or overstock situation because one of the variables are not properly set. So having this understanding before jumping into finding the digital solution I think is really essential and what we're like what we would like to then engage with is what is behind the policy first and then how can we use the digital tool to improve that i think considerations is something that we should spend a lot more time on before uh, uh going forward with actually looking on how to how to implement 
All right, so that was the approach and how we see the tool best being used. Um, and now I'll go into the specific features and what they look like, all right? There will be a lot of screenshots, screenshots of the different uh, data entry screens and so on, but we'll have a, a chance to try it out on a tablet in the afternoon where um, I'll be speaking to you in, the, in a parallel session. One point here, we're looking to use native DHIS2 functionality first. That means that we're looking to develop uh, um, uh, different uh, use cases that can be immediately used and not requiring newer versions or um, uh, uh, further software development. And of course, the first is the aggregate uh, uh, data model and uh, monthly reporting. I think this is used in quite a few countries long before um, you know myself and the LMIS team came on the scene that uh, stock data was already being captured. It's a great uh, uh, step to digitizing, uh, really, stock reporting, uh, making this data available. If you have your uh, requirement to report data by the 7th of the month, you can also have your stock data available by the 7th, and that can be used for replenishing stocks. That can be used for informing orders uh, and reducing that demand distortion that I referred to. If the stock uh, uh, received, uh, the stock on hand, are all up to date, it, it's the best uh, uh, indicator of a correct order and ensuring that you have the correct supplies to treat patients that need the treatment. A lot of times you have these physical uh, paper stock cards and this is what we're looking to replace is to have um, um, the reports uh, immediately available by digitizing this aspect of the inventory control. So that was the reporting. Uh, secondly is then uh, real-time stock. So uh, one of the requirements from the standards and what many people ask is, can we have real-time stock? And this is a tool that was developed uh, in version 40, um, released earlier this year and from Android Capture version 2.8. Um, Austin referred to it yesterday and, uh, um, and this is the specific workflow for issuing uh, uh, medicines or products. Um, within a health facility with just uh, three or four clicks. You can choose the distribution workflow, the facility that you're working with and where that is being issued to. And then you have an uh, immediate list of, of the stock on hand and how much you're, you're going to distribute. This is a tracker program. There's nothing different uh, than what's already uh, able to be co configured on tracker, but with the regular workflow, it would be uh, 14 to 15 clicks to issue a single item, and that process would need to be repeated for each one. Here, you can issue multiple items with, with much fewer clicks, and again, that's what you'll be able to test out in the, in the afternoon. So it uses residual batch counting. You can immediately put the number of items that you're taking from stock, and you'll see the remaining uh, uh, quantities, and you can count how many is on your shelf and just match those numbers. It replaces the uh, physical stock card with the line listing, uh, so the line listing app will be able to show how much uh, stock you have and what the transactions have been. Um, you can use uh, for the stock received, you can either have that through an integration or using a bulk load uh, or import tool. And the barcodes can be printed for barcode scanning uh, for issuing. Um, and then for future development, um, it's uh, the ability to manage items at a batch level and even a serialized mode for vaccines uh, when those requirements come into play and GS1 data matrix codes are incorporated in, in, in vials. So that is a, a next uh, iterations of this tool. It does require that you have a orderly stock uh, with the different barcodes at a generic level for the different items. These are images actually from an implementation in Yemen, uh, in uh, still at a prototype phase from a, a COVID-19 treatment clinic in 2020 but it's simply a requirement to have orderly stock with barcodes, and this could be done in a larger or smaller facility. And here you have, I'll go through some quick screenshots just to show the workflow and how that looks. So you go into your Android capture and you have your program for your real-time stock management at the top. You click on that and you're given this specific workflow, which is activated for that one uh, program for stock uh, management. Um, the distribution workflow here is chosen. Uh, you're already assigned the facility to which you're, uh, where you're working and you can choose where to deliver. So in this case, inpatient surgical department, the items that are available with the current stock on hand are shown. You choose the quantities you want to, to uh, take from stock, chlorexidine uh, two and so on. And you click a review button at the bottom. 
You simply confirm that the quantities are correct. You look at the table, you've picked your items and now they're there in front of you. Yes, 188 of this item, 41 of the other, and you click confirm and that is it. That Your transaction is complete. As soon as you synchronize your device, that uh, information is immediately available for the upstream system in the case of an integration or for any reporting or any uh, information within the DHIS2 system. Second transaction then, uh, second workflow. Uh, you click on your real-time stock uh, tool. You choose discard now. Instead of distributing, we're going to uh, discard. This is in the case that you might have uh, an expired item or a damaged item. You then have a, a color code change, so you really know that it's a different workflow. You choose the quantity of items. You have the same review and confirm, and that workflow is completed in the same way as the first. And then the last workflow that we're supporting is stock correction. And this really is in the case of once you conduct your monthly stock count, you count all of the items that are in stock, you see that there's a, a difference, either stock found or stock loss. You can then correct that quantity with this third workflow. And with these three workflows, you're then ensuring that you have your accurate stock on hand in a very simple workflow for a, um, a facility level worker who does not have stock management as their number one or two uh, uh, responsibility. Many different priorities, lots of different work to be done. And this is a, a simplified workflow to be able to capture that, um, uh, that information. All right, so those were the first report-based and now transaction-based stock management. I move on then to equipment or cold chain equipment lifecycle management. So this is another tracker-based um, uh, tool. Um, and this is to manage and update cold chain equipment inventories. Using tracker, you can capture all of the different cold chain equipment within uh, facilities. From the moment of installation, all of the different stages within managing that, uh, repairs, uh, preventive maintenance, uh, alerts, and any other event, all the way down to the end of life and, uh, and once the equipment is no longer in use. And in that way, you have an immediate um, um, global or, or, or national uh, catalog for all of the item that you have uh, currently being used. It's integrated with the WHO PQS catalog, so you have these different attributes immediately um, populated once you're registering and enrolling new equipment. And it can support decision-making uh, for vaccine distribution, knowing the equipment that you have, if it's in, in uh, functioning or not, and also for strategic planning. For replacing items, you can quickly see uh, where you've had more alerts, where you've had more repairs uh, required, and which, item, which uh, pieces of equipment require uh, replacement. And this is just a simple uh, a graphic showing the number of alarms. Um, uh, this is just a, a demo data. It's a, a, not from an implementation showing different areas that have had more or less alerts. And in this way, you can target where uh, equipment needs to be replaced uh, as part of a replacement plan. Um, another thing, we'll also get to test this out in the afternoon. Uh, another thing that can be done is that uh, repairs can be requested. So a facility can actually request for a repair and a notification sent to a district technician who then within the line listing app can have all of the different requests by facility and in that way plan their, uh, uh, their regular work to ensure that, uh, that all of this is online again. The same can be done for biomedical equipment or really any kind of investment uh, material. Uh, here for uh, hospital management, uh, you can have all of the different pieces of uh, biomedical equipment within a hospital with the specific stages that are needed for that piece of equipment. Not all of them will be the same. Of course, for cold chain, you have different uh, considerations, uh, temperature monitoring and so on. So that can be adapted for the type of equipment also that you're monitoring within a hospital uh, setting. Temperature monitoring, this is one which is under development. We've uh, developed a prototype. We've uh, uh, run a pilot in Mozambique where we actually connected a Bluetooth sensor to the Android capture and had that data uh, uh, within DHS2. It will be a future requirement, again, according to the WHO PQS and something that we want to be ahead of the curve. If anybody is looking into or interested in uh, discussing this further, it would be very interesting to see what would the specific needs be? And if you have any experience within the use case, uh, what we're looking to do is uh, make a solution that would be readily uh, available for any type of uh, monitoring device that might be available out there. So we're looking for partners interested in developing this together with us. So for the first tools that I showed you, 
they're available, ready now to be implemented and used. For this, we're still developing further this temperature monitoring concept. What can be done is manual data entry rather than inputting the data on a paper form. You can move that to uh, entering it in the tracker and connecting it to the um, equipment lifecycle management. Um, and in that way, you're digitizing again your paper forms. But this would be the then future iteration with automated temperature monitoring. And then last but not least is just a simple product catalog available for health workers. So once the products are being managed at the facility level uh, with the real-time stock management, you can also have uh, different products with the attributes and details for, of that available for the health workers. Now for the integrated dashboards on web or mobile, um, just the ability to provide analytics and compare health and stock data side by side can also provide a, a lot of insights. And this is another aspect, again, going back to the standards and really practice showing how much stock has been used and how many patients have been treated and seeing if there's any discrepancies between those can uh, also inform uh, decision making, improving health service delivery and so on. For that, we have a specific project which we've worked on uh, called the Thrive 360 project with UNICEF, where we've brought in uh, some UNICEF and country supply chain data. Uh, not very many, a lot of it is survey data, and then compare that to different uh, service data within DHIS2. Um, and this is really to support national logistics working groups, so the joint immunization uh, supply chain teams, to be able to analyze and conduct uh, uh, operations uh, with information in one single source. Um, many times these teams are accessing different websites, uh, PDF files uh, locally, uh, Excel sheets that they track, uh, waiting for paper forms and reports. And the objective of this and what we've done is brought together multiple sources into a single system. And they're calling it the National Control Towers for Immunization Supply Chain. Um, and we're running actually the first trainings and the first, uh, uh, and the first pilot countries to really connect to these teams and see how having a singular place for all of this immunization supply chain data can support decision-making and operationalization. So that's for the analytics aspect. Um, for any of you working closely with UNICEF, we can also see how that may be interesting to, to be implemented and they're looking to expand that and make it available for all UNICEF supported countries. So that was a very quick uh, run through of the features. So stock management, uh, cold chain and biomedical equipment, uh, uh, life cycle management, um, as well as the product catalog and the developing temperature monitoring. For all of those, there could be uh, many considerations. And I think that's what is really important for us to focus on in the parallel sessions in the afternoon, getting your feedback and getting really the details of what the use cases may be. Um, one of the key points as well with the considerations is the ability to bring in the LMIS perspective, the supply chain perspective into the discussions. Now for guidance and resources, it's a lot of the same uh, uh, resources you're used to. So within uh, on the DHIS2.org website, you have a logistics uh, page that's uh, dedicated for that. If you navigate through the health uh, domain, uh, you'll be redirected to the logistics page if you look at stock and cold chain, of course. So very much something that's integrated in, in that sense. Um, the configuration for these tools are available on the uh, documentation website at docs.dhis2.org. The community of practice has also uh, a section under implementation for uh, uh, supply chain and LMIS. So free, feel free to go in there, ask questions, and challenge also our approach, challenge uh, this best practice that we're showing, and uh, come with new requirements. And really, um, uh, that's the key to, to, to improving, I think, is having uh, that, that feedback. And then we also have a demo site where you can go in and play with these different tools and see how they're actually functioning um, and, and use them as a reference point um, for your discussions. Now, I see actually that I'm a bit ahead of time. I had to cut down a much longer presentation to, to be able to fit the 45 minutes, but I think that's fine. We can maybe take some questions. Um, but I'll move to the summary then uh, section. So. Improving health program management. Uh, it's the case that I made at the very start showing that landscape, the HIS landscape, and really looking at um, what can we improve. And really we're looking to improve the health service delivery and looking to bring in stock and health data for analytics, and then looking to improve the availability, uh, uh, to improve the, 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 the outcomes, the health outcomes. 
Secondly, and a concept that I referred to multiple times is the demand distortion uh, within the supply chain. Having that key consumption level data for the uh, uh, demand planning and the uh, distribution network is essential to reducing stockouts and overstock. I think uh, stockouts are commonly referred to as the number one uh, challenge for health supply chains when speaking to different uh, uh, partners. It's the number one aspect that they bring up. And I think this is one of the uh, key aspects that we then want to leverage with aiming at facility level data. Um, another point here is um, once you have that facility level data, we don't simply want to show beautiful charts and beautiful maps with here are the stockouts we have. You we need to make that move to operationalization, connecting supply chain teams and operational teams to be able to first identify and then immediately rectify stockout issues. And making that jump is uh, oftentimes uh, more difficult than it may seem. Uh, so it's not simply about showing the problem, but how can we actually connect this to decision makers? There's no sense in making it available if the teams that can actually do something uh, about the stockout uh, uh, that they don't have access to the system, for example. So making the connection with LMIS teams, giving them access to the system, the Thrive 360 platform, uh, as I mentioned in the UNICEF project, it's about putting the data in the hands of those that can actually make a difference and uh, rectify the situation. And then my last slide on the summary is, uh, again, reinforcing that logistics management uh, here, we're proposing it as a subset of health and should be aimed at improving health outcomes. Uh, that is the overall outcome. Um, within um, LMIS, then DHIS2 can be used at the facility level in a very effective way. And we really try to link how that can be used to the outcome level. Consider all of the same aspects of good uh, HIS design, user-centric participatory design, and so on. Um, if you're creating dashboards and wanting to show stockouts because there's a top manager wanting to see those, that's one aspect. But if the data is not available for the user that can actually uh, operationalize it, it really isn't uh, achieving your overall outcome. And I put there, think of Yearn. I know many of you have referred to his teachings and uh, uh, the advising, so, so keep him in mind in that aspect. We're not advocating for anything different than what you've been uh, doing before. Uh, and then uh, the second to last point on implementing LMIS tools without foresight may create more problems than it solves. I had two slides on the considerations and really it could have been a hundred slides. The number of discussions we've had from country to country, from a partner to partner, um, the, uh, the different aspects that go into the solutions are, are, can be quite complex and they're both organizational and technical and those need to be explored on a case-by-case -case basis. The policies used for demand planning, for supply planning, uh, having public, public and private facilities or paid or free products, there's a whole lot of complexities that go into this. I know that uh, dispensing to patients uh, is one uh, requirement that is often asked for. Uh, financing and accounting, how much does this, uh, do these products cost? How can we report on that? How can we link all of this together? And we're very quickly, the scope creep, going into the ERP ELMIS tool. Uh, how do we do everything? And, and that becomes part of the challenge is having the foresight to say we're aiming for this objective and then keeping it at that level. And for the additional use cases, developing them maybe one by one. And again, that's where I ask that you challenge us on how we can develop certain of these uh, use cases a bit better and maybe a bit broader. But for now, this is really a, a key aspect of considerations. And then lastly, it's a question back to you if it's better to join forces and provide an integrated end-to-end -end solution for LMIS. Don't try to do everything with a single tool. Uh, simply using the ELMISs that are available uh, has been very successful in certain aspects, but there's none that's had the same reach and success as DHIS2 within HMIS, and that's what we try to propose here is that integrated, we may be able to have that reach. Look at supply chain manage in a holistic way across products, across programs. And then also look at how to reach all of the different levels of the supply chain. Um, having an expensive tool at a central medical store and distributing down to a district store is needed and important, but maybe the cost effectiveness of then rolling that out to hundreds and thousands and even tens of thousands of low level facilities may not be as cost effective. So then having DHS2 integrated at that level, that's really the key that we're trying to, to, to unlock and show 
that there's a cost benefit here to using it at that uh, facility service level. Many facilities with uh, um, some low resource or, or at least low volume and, and having the data then digitized across through the integration model. All right, um, I see we have quite a bit of time for questions. Um, I went through perhaps a bit quickly uh, and I even, as I said, removed slides that went into more technical details and, and challenges that have come up. But um, maybe if we can take questions or, or um, hear back from the group, I think that would be great. But that's DHS2 LMIS, thank you. Доброе утро, уважаемые участники. И спасибо вам такую за шикарную презентацию. Как менеджер программы иммунизации... Слышно, да? Как менеджер программы иммунизации хочу сказать, что это отличная новость, поскольку в начальных версиях DHS-2, конечно, LMS не присутствовал, как мы знали. И на сегодняшний момент, что есть хороший подход и использование универсальной DHS-2 с LMS – это вообще уникальная возможность. Thank you so much for a very nice presentation, for a very informative one. And uh, it's a great news that finally LMS is can be integrated with uh, DHS-2, because as far as we know, uh, it was not integrated before, and uh, it uh, provides great opportunities uh, uh, from the perspective of uh, the immunization program, first of all. Вообще для программы иммунизации, это cold chain и управление запасами, это один из, скажем так, приоритетных тоже направлений. Поэтому в 2018-2019 годах Кыргызстан проводил такую, скажем так, была миссия ЮНИСЕФ, страну, которая рассматривала возможность универсальной DHS с элементами или интеграция ЛМС, и когда мы сделали такой перерасчет, то оказалось, что это очень дорого обойдется. Но если сейчас будет сидеть DHS-2, такая вот такой функционал именно что с LMS это будет отличная возможность для стран. So actually from the perspective of the immunization program both the stock management and uh, cold chain equipment management do represent the priorities and back in 2018 and 19 UNICEF has uh, already invested some efforts into uh, trying to integrate the LMIS and DHS or at least some elements uh, and there was some uh, costing exercise conducted but it turned out to be too costly. And that's why we're very happy that uh, now this opportunity is uh, becoming closer. Когда мы будем говорить опыт страны, тогда мы, наверное, более немножко раскроем эту тему. Но хотелось бы сказать, что поскольку не было отсутствия да, этого функционала, мы отдельные модули в информационной системе нашей страновой национального продукта сделали модуль отдельный по управлению запасами, складской учет и по холодовой цепи. And uh, Kyrgyzstan will make the presentation, and probably that will be the time when they will all elaborate on these elements. But since, uh, or due to the shortage of this integration of LMIS and DHS2, the Kyrgyz Republic has uh, developed separate modules for stock management and cold chain equipment management in the overall health information system. И возникает очень много вопросов, когда идет складской учет и идет, когда управление запасами. И вот то, что вы сегодня обозначили, это управление запасов на уровне организации здравоохранения. Я хотелось бы спросить, и это же получается, этот же функционал, он и будет использоваться и для складского учета, потому что есть там определенные нюансы, мы с этим столкнулись. And uh, since uh, you have presented uh, the functions uh, or functionality uh, of this uh, new uh, integrated approach, uh, Gulnara uh, has a question whether uh, there will be also the opportunities to support the inventory uh, of, the, uh, of the vaccines uh, as well, because there are some nuances. And uh, we have faced some challenges with as far as the inventory is concerned, not only the stock management, but the inventory as well. 
Can I ask what are the different nuances about the the inventory uh, apart from the stock control? What what is it exactly is the difference that she refers to? Там были на уровне оказания услуг именно использование, да, когда идет утилизация, то есть когда применяется, да, администрирование и управление запасом, поскольку мы сделали так, что национальном уровне, если поступает вакцина в серии, она автоматически должен спускаться у нас в стране четыре уровня цепи поставок: это национальный вакцинный склад, областной, районный и уровень первички. И вот пока с национального уровня до уровня первички спустится вакцина, и там уже на уровне администрирования у нас были немножко проблемы. Да? Как сделать, чтобы на уровне организации здравоохранения при использовании на каждом прививочном пункте вот этот момент у нас немножко проблематично выходит? First of all, I would like to uh, inform you that there in the Kyrgyz Republic we have four levels of vaccine supply uh, at the national level, regional level, district level, and healthcare facility level. And uh, we had some uh, challenges or related to the uh, uh, or associated with the delivery of health services or vaccination or immunization services. Uh, first of all, uh, how uh, how it would be possible to manage the inventory and the stocks yeah. at the facility level? After the services are provided. Мы над этим работаем. This is the area that we are working on. Sure. Okay, great. Thank you for the uh, for the information. I think we'll have a, a lot to speak about and, and discuss the specific use case. Um, what I think is interesting is we're looking at supply chain management from really the demand network and how the stocks are distributed from central medical store to the last store at the service level. And really that's what's comprised with what I presented. Exploring the use cases beyond uh, the store once it's issued from the store, I think that's where we want to have those considerations, discussions. What does that entail? Uh, who is involved within that workflow? Uh, if it's in an immunization program, is it vaccination teams? If it's in a, a, a clinical setting, is it a, a doctor prescribing and a patient is picking up the items? So it's extending the use case beyond the medical store, which I think is the considerations, discussions, which should be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. And secondly, that we're very happy to then receive uh, those requirements and then uh, that we're challenged on improving uh, how that can be solved. So uh, we'd be happy to discuss uh, and take this up uh, later on in the day. So thank you. Хорошо, спасибо. И второй очень краткий вопрос. Используете ли вы в своей работе sizing tool, ввоза инструмент? И второе, это этот, скажем, веб-инструмент по инвентаризации холодильного оборудования ИГА. Uh, thank you so much for for the for the answer and another short question promise. So whether you're using the sizing WHO sizing tool in your work and uh, web based cold chain equipment uh, tool which is called EGA EGA. Yeah, we we've been in close uh, collaboration with uh, UNICEF and WHO and other partners. We've looked to align what we're proposing with what they have. Part of the approach also i didn't well, i wasn't so explicit but we don't want to duplicate existing solutions we're not looking to go into the space where uh yeah the ega and there's also the who smt tool and there's there are many other tools and i even showed some of the elmis's we've engaged with every one of the ones on the screen uh, uh that i showed and others and we're looking to develop tools that are not existing or widely implemented and that goes for all of them so we're looking to be aligned with what's in the market and fill an existing gap. Спасибо большое. Good. Good. All right, thank you everyone and um I'll hand it back to the uh to the organizers. Thank you. Um, all right. I'd like to ask my colleague Michael um, to come up. Now, he wasn't here with us today, so before he gets started, I'd also like to ask him to make a bit of an introduction about his role and, and what he's doing with us in the, the university. <laughs> 